morning, Bethany family. Good it's Brother morning, Kevin guys. here. And this is Sister Desiree. And we want to welcome you all into the room this morning as we get ready for 8 o'clock oh, service. Yeah, and as you guys are coming on in, we want you to like, comment, mm -hmm. and share this yes. broadcast, right? We want to get ready for this this conversation in, ch in Chestnut Checkers. Yes. I'm excited. How about you, Sister Des? I'm always excited to hear what God has to say through Bishop. And I'm just so so excited that you guys are here to join Absolutely. us this morning and if this is your first time ever watching a broadcast ever. from bethany baptist church all the way from lindenwall new jersey yes. you want to make sure that you feel special and that you know that you are a very important person yes. so type that vip down below right in the comments so that I we know. know we can say good morning to you <laughs> and guys if you see someone who has that vip you know love on them a little bit Absolutely. say good morning let them know that they are in a beautiful community of worshipers and followers yeah right? and as they're talking to the people that have the vips that's just another way of them being connected with them during social media and speaking of connected mm -hmm. we have the connection church absolutely we do so the connection church mm -hmm. is basically you know the connection church is just basically everything online without the building essentially so essentially. you still get the classes you mm -hmm. still have the panels you know you still can be active in ministries you as well you still get connected to the physical to the physical things without the physical building absolutely mm -hmm. so if you are joining us for the first time or you want to be you know be more involved please join the connection church but another way that we like to stay connected here is by playing the game on engage right we, it wouldn't be engaged live without a game guys. it wouldn't it, it wouldn't. wouldn't so what's the name of the game that we're playing so this game is called the chase so Ooh. we're going to get a question we mm -hmm. have a buzzer we're to a different team so i'm team uh sister does and if you want to be on my team which you should you're gonna have a star emoji at the comments down below no no i need you if you want to be on my team please put the dancing emoji because we're going to dance you all around be on this team. He's gonna okay lose. you know what first question please <laughs> true or false bethany church was founded in 1967. it's true True. Thank you. Uh, okay. Next question. I'll let you get that one. See how I pause? No, I'm a no. gentleman. No, no, Go ahead, next question. No, know it. <laughs> what song do we sometimes sing during service that references elements of nature? Good one. <laughs> um, um, pause? Pass? Pass? Can we pass? <laughs> Where was Bethany Church first location? <laughs> um, it actually was started in a house, but... Somerset. It was in Summerdale. Summerset. Summerdale? What, what is it? Summerdale was oh, the correct answer. All right. <laughs> Dang it. What was, what was the sermon title of the 2018 Watch Night Service? Oh, that's taking it back. Oh my God. That's like three years ago. My and these questions. I know Mama LaBoo is behind yeah. this. Can we pass? Can we pass? Pass it. Bethany's motto is. Transforming lives one at a time. Give me the best. The church that never sleeps. <laughs> Who's next one? True or false? Ricky Diller was a musical guest at Easter 2017. True. Incorrect. False. He was, was at Watch Night. <laughs> oh, well, Ricky, he tore up the stage. <laughs> he did tear up the stage, though. Okay, go ahead. Next question. We hold Transforming Lives Month and what time? January and August. Wow. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, keep going, keep going. Let's do another one. Stars, are you what in there? What does the G stand for in <laughs> Can we say it together? Gregory. Greg Gregory. Gregory. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more. Bethany ordained female deacons for the first time in what year? In 2018. Correct. That's, yeah, I did not know that. You know, it's such a beautiful thing how we just can stay connected because we can stay connected. And, you know, we love when our ministers just minister to us and just give us that word. So we have a special guest. Yes. Hello, Deacon. Hello, Deacon. Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> so can you give us some en encouraging words this morning, good sir? Well, you know, the game was called The Chase. But we're here to encourage you that The Chase is over. Mm. Yes. Why? Because you are a child of God. Yes. Deuteronomy 14 says, You are the children of the Lord, mm -hmm. your God. Do not cut yourself off, shave the front of your heads, or for the dead. For you are the people, yes. the holy people of God. Wow. So we are God's chosen. We are his generation. So now we don't have to be bound by sickness. Wow. We don't have to be bound by the devil. We don't have to be bound by sin. We are here and we are not being chased or bound by wow. anything anymore because God has set us free. So wow. this is just your ministry moment. Be encouraged. I don't know who this is for. Stand in faith. 
and know that God has you. Wow. And he is in the pursuit of you. Yes. So that you're no longer bound by sin. Mm. Absolutely. And you know, we just love God. The women just took the game and like turned it on. You, you see? You see? We're this is why we call him Deacon and McGee. Yeah. So I need y'all in the comments right now saying Deacon <laughs> McGee with the praise hand emojis. He has his own emoji. The praise hands emoji, right? <laughs> Oh my gosh. But thank no. you so, so much. We thank you. We thank you. But we want you to take a look at this video now. What if we could love the way Jesus did? Passionately, faithfully, powerfully. What if the way we love could make a difference in the world around us? What if that love looked at everyone the way God does? A love which doesn't see the past, but is consumed by a desire to see people come to know Jesus. A love which is patient and kind, not envious or prideful. A love which puts others before ourselves, chooses peace over anger. A love which protects, trusts, hopes, perseveres. Do we love like this? Do we love like Jesus? Maybe it's time to ask a simple question. How can we love better? So as you, as you guys know, we celebrate our church every year. Every year. And this year, in October, we are celebrating our 54th anniversary. My God. My gosh. <laughs> so 54 that's years. That's a lot of time. 54 it's years. It's very young oh. when you think about a church in yes, general. Absolutely. But like the amount of things that we've accomplished in this time. Absolutely. And incredible. so many lives transformed. Mm -hmm. So many people being rejuvenated and just feeling refreshed. So we want to hear your testimonies. We want to hear about how long you've been here at Bethany. Mm -hmm. What has, you know, stood out to you? I know for me, it's just always been the series and the, the yeah. worship and the power of God. So we want to hear that. So we want you to please send your personal testimonies to social at gotobethany.com. Again, it's social at gotobethany.com so we can highlight our church and show it a whole bunch of love yeah. in the month of October, right? Sister? Especially during these unconventional times. Absolutely. Like, the church is still moving and shaking. Absolutely. Right. And speaking of the church still moving and still shaking, we still have ministries yes. that are still moving during this time. So can we shout out a we special ministry? We have our ministry? Innovations Ministry, which is one of our health ministries here, yes. or one of our health organizations here at the church. And we want to just send a special, special congratulations because they were highlighted by the Gift of Life organization Ooh, from all awesome. that they do. Yes. So we want to thank them because you know like you just said we're transforming lives mm -hmm. all the time yes. they're transforming lives all year long right. so we want to just say thank you for all the work that who's a part of that organization what you are doing yeah. and how you are uplifting and still showing God's love and grace Absolutely. through all this I love all this that time. It's incredible. And it just shows that, you know, even though we are closed physically, we are still moving virtually. Yeah. The body is still moving. It's still active. Yeah. So if you guys want to be a part of a ministry or you're looking for that population, that ministry in church, please make sure that you join our Connection Church. Make sure that you stay engaged with us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just get connected with the store this time because it's so important. We can feel disconnected, right? Absolutely. But yeah. we are not disconnected right now because we are getting ready We're to get to in service. In, you know, so get your breakfast, whether it's cereal, French toast. Get your pens, your paper, because it's now time. It's time. See, See you there. You. Praise the Lord, everybody. Worship the Lord. Honor him. Come on, lift up his name and bless his name. Our God is absolutely wonderful. I keep saying it every single week because I want you to know that God is wonderful and nothing is too hard for him. We're so glad you can join us for another Encounter Worship experience. Please share at this time if you can. We're getting ready to go into worship, the Word of God, and we're believing that every time we come together, even though it's virtual, we believe that God calls us together to hear His will, to experience His plan, to heal, save, deliver, and set free. I don't know about you, I just come with an expectation that God is going to do something every time we come together and worship. But if we all have that mindset, God will do it. We must seek his kingdom, seek his will, seek his plan. 
Our scripture reading in our prayer today is actually going to be combined. It's going to be the Lord's Prayer. And that's going to be our prayer because Jesus prayed it and said pray it. Let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory forever and ever. Amen. God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy holy name. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us, Lord, that as we forgive. Oh, let your key come. Let your will be done. Oh, no. In heaven, let you glory come, shining like the sun. from the evil one.
Everybody sing it together. is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. serve a God that is always looking out for you. Anybody got the belief that you're going to be able to run on and see what the end's going to be because you know that things are going to get better. Help me, singers. Things are going to get better. Things are going to get better. Things are going to get better. Come on, proclaim it in your atmosphere. Speak it right where you are right now. Come on, in the faith, say it. Don't be discouraged by how it looks right now. <laughs> because things are turning around for you right now. Anybody believe the promise of God? I want to move on, but somebody needs to keep hearing this in your spirit. Things are going to get better. I do believe the things are going to get better. Don't be discouraged. Come on. By how things seem. Believe the word of God. All I got to do is believe it. I really do want to move on. But can we stay with that message right there? Come on, sing it with authority. Uh. Things are gonna get better. Things are gonna get better. Yeah. Things are gonna get better. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. By how By things seem. Oh, I wanna move on, but I don't know who this is for. God gave God you a promise. A promise. All you gotta do is believe. 
its authority. Things won't get better. Don't be discouraged this morning. Don't be discouraged. By how the enemy is trying to make it seem. God gave you a promise. God gave me a promise. Sing it out, ladies, if I just. There's a whole nother song to this, but this is your Don't message this morning. By how by things how seem, seem. Hey. 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 Promise. if I just believe. I don't know who this is for, but things are gonna get bad. Things are gonna get better. Believe it on your own self. Things are gonna get better. Know that God has promised you better. Even in this pandemic, you're still living for your promise. A promise. God gave me a promise. God gave me a promise. God gave me a promise. If I just believe, if I just believe. I know we rehearsed the whole song, but say right things. Things are gonna get better. Things are gonna get better. We got a whole song, but we need to stay right here. I know it's gonna get better. If you just reach up and hold on, don't worry about what they say. Don't worry about what the statistics say. Don't worry about what your bank account says right now. You've got somebody in the hospital that you're praying for. Send this message with the power of your tongue. And let him know that it's going to get better. I know, I know, I know it. It's turning around in your favor. It's already turning around in your favor. Stand on this promise. reason I'm taking these breaks is so that you have a little time to get top of mind what it is you've been going through, what it is you've been faced with. And just in case everything has been good for you, think about the families of the people in the Gulf Coast that lost everything. Think about the families that were in Hurricane Ida in Jersey, in New York, and they are looking for things right now to get a whole lot better. They lost everything they had. But how many know we serve a God can, that can revive and can renew us and give you back better than you had? So this might not be the message for you, but if you will, say it with us on behalf of somebody else. Things are going to get better.
are yay and amen. Things are going to get better. Things are going to get better. Yeah. Things are going to get better. Yeah. Things are going to get better. Things are going to get better. Things are going to get better. Take it up. Things are going to get better. Things are going to get better. somebody who have seen people check out of here without notice and you still are behind with the memory of them trying to figure out what am I going to do without them how am I going to go forward without them but we come with a message this morning that if you stand strong in the word of God we come with a message this morning to let you know that no good thing will he withhold from you we come to you this morning with a message to let you know that everything is working for your good. If you stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, stand still and watch his power, stand still and watch him work, you will know that things are going to get better, better for me. Good morning, Bethany family, and welcome to the Bethany News. Good morning, guys. <laughs> Don't you guys want to know what's going on around the plaza <laughs> this week? We're excited about what God is getting ready to do mm -hmm. and how he's going to connect us, and we want to make sure that you are a part of everything that we do. Uh, first up we have is that prayer call, yeah. Monday through Friday at 12 o'clock p.m. There is someone on the line ready to pray. You see the number up on the screen. Make sure that you copy that number down and make sure you call Monday through Friday from 12 to 12 15 is our time of intercessory and prayer prayer yeah. is the key that's going to make things Power happen for prayer. us mm -hmm. and don't forget about Monday the recap come check <laughs> us out guys yes. Desiree <laughs> will definitely be there to answer any questions to really discuss what we learned from the word of God mm -hmm. and how to apply it to our lives I am so glad that we even have this opportunity to do that because a lot of times we walk away from the word mm -hmm. and then we forget what the message was about yeah but by us having this Monday recap right after Sunday is over it's a reminder of what we learn and how we can apply it to our lives I right? love that yes absolutely and then on Tuesday we have our Diamonds Women's Ministry yes. so make sure you guys 
come in come on out ladies at 7 p.m Rev kelly you're gonna be there right yes i'm abs- actually i'm going to be sharing a word Uh-oh. from the book of hannah we're so talking get ready about ladies again right get ready because <laughs> prayer is obviously the theme of the week yes. so yes. make sure you guys get ready for that also we have the presence our word impact series Amen. coming up on wednesday at 7 p.m as well every wednesday the dynamic duo give us something yes. more to chew on as my brother kev always likes to say we get fed on sunday and yeah. we get fed on wednesday so you want to make sure you tune in and get your bellies red Ooh, ready for that get your bellies ready yes <laughs> <laughs> so we're always about feeding but we're also about trying to empower you in your business the bpa is going to be meeting again this week i know it seems like it's coming up early but the way that the weeks have run It's this week. Mm -hmm. This is the third Thursday of the month, and we're looking forward to how God is going to begin to speak to us in our businesses. There is so much information that is shared there through financial, through leadership, um, just a plethora of information for you as a business owner. And we want to make sure that you connect with us. And then we don't want you to forget about Saturday. On Point Live with Bishop David G. Evans and his counterpart, Pastor Nicholas Smith. Those men work hard. All the time. (laughs) Every time you look up, you see the dynamic duo, Mm -hmm. as they say, the two of them together. I mean, they're even beginning to look alike to me. (laughs) You know, I see it. I can see it. Yes. The two of them are always together. So we look forward to you tuning in with us every Saturday morning. Yeah, where they discuss some pop culture. They discuss literally everything that's going on in the world, both spiritual and worldly. So Mm -hmm. make sure you guys tune into that. And then Sunday, we have a full set full day of worship experience full day of word and so you guys get ready for that we have our 8 a.m service we have our engaged live we have our 11 a.m service yes. actually before our 8 a.m service we have an engaged live as well so make Amen. sure you guys tune in tune for in. that too so all throughout sunday and then at six o'clock we have our 10 times better man series so Amen. make sure you got listen there's content on content on content mm-hmm. so the word is constantly be fed, being fed and pushed out throughout the week so make sure you guys share and let someone know you know that we're here Yep. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we're going to head back into service. You guys stay blessed. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad you've taken the time to join me once again for the Encounter Worship Experience here at Bethany Church, the Transformation Church in New Jersey. Uh, We're having a glorious time in this Chestnut Checkers series as we are bringing to a close the part of the conversation concerning angels. Uh, In this series, we have endeavored we has been our assignment to introduce you to spiritual warfare for those of you that don't know anything about it uh, to strengthen your faith and your understanding of this part of the kingdom walk but also to give you another perspective on several different subjects as you wage war and win the victory in each of your spiritual battles that all of us wage every day of our lives I am so honored you've taken the time to join me. I ask you, as always, to share with someone, uh, tag four or five people, invite them to this conversation, inbox some folk, tweet them, text them, whatever you have to do. Call them on the phone. Tell them to jump on right now at David G. Evans 1 and join us for this great conversation, this life-changing spiritual endeavor called Chess Not Checkers. Now, before we go to the Word today, I want to encourage those of you who are watching me and don't know the Lord for yourself, uh, whether you're young or old, I want you to pay close attention to what I'm about to say. The greatest decision you will ever make in your life is that decision to connect, to come into a relationship with the one the Bible says created you, and that is God. That relationship is facilitated through coming to know Jesus accepting the pardon of your sins, the, the, the identification of your past, no longer in denial about the things that we failed at. And in that situation, in that relationship with Jesus, he leads you by way of the Spirit of God, that is the power of God, into a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. The Bible lets us know that this relationship is revolutionary, it's radical that it causes all things to become new, that whosoever shall call upon God shall be saved. I love that because it means that our backgrounds, those things we failed at, those things that we have not done well, the life that we live that may have been going in every direction but towards God, that if you're in that whosoever, and I always add if you've done whatsoever, 
If you call on his name, the Bible guarantees you shall be saved. And you may say, saved from what? Salvation has to do with deliverance and deliverance has everything to do with salvation. The saving of your soul so you're a candidate for heaven. The saving of your life so you suddenly start living the life that God has created you to live. It's, it's not simple, it's simplistic. It does not change. It stays the same because God does not change. So today I want to urge you to make a decision, a life-changing decision, a directional decision that will take you from the past that you've lived, that you've been dissatisfied with, that you've secretly said to yourself, there's got to be something better, into the life that God has created you to live. Jesus says, I come that you might have life, but I want you to have something greater, life more abundantly. So there's a dimension of living, a dimension of life that God has created you to live that you may not have access yet. And as part of my assignment to lead you into that relationship. And while I'm talking to you about this, there's some of you watching me right now. You know some people who absolutely love the Lord and were on fire for God at one time. They were passionate about the word. The things of God were important to them. But somewhere along the way, something happened got distracted. It might be you, could be someone close to you. And all of a sudden you were not where you used to be as far as your relationship with God, your relationship with his word, praying like you used to pray, believing like you used to believe. And watch this. And if you connect the dots, you can connect the dots from where you are right now back to the moment you decided you did not need God nearly as much and all the difficulties that have ensued since that day. If you connect the dots back to when the trouble started, you will see it coincides in time and sometimes in place where you separated from God, where the intimacy was broken, where the fellowship was broken and the relationship was strained. You can make a decision to repair that relationship today. And last but not least, those of you that love the Lord, you're saved and God has led you to join us today. And you've been searching like a, a thirsty deer panting after the brook. In other words, you've been thirsty for the truth, thirsty for power and authority, thirsty for a breakthrough in your life. Today is the day you connect with this house and this ministry and share the anointing and the journey that we are taking into the kingdom mysteries of God in the fulfillment of God's promises in our lives as we watch faith begin to produce the fruit that God has promised every believer. So I wanna pray with you right now. Pray that those of you that are not saved, be saved today. Those of you that need to come back to the Lord, that you turn around, make that decision, say yes. Those who need to unite, and us all of you need to unite with the house of God, and particularly this branch of ministry. I wanna pray for you right now. Let's pray. God, I bless your name for the honesty of those watching us right now, those that are willing to say, Lord, I don't know you. Then are those, Lord, to say, I know you, but I'm not serving you like I should. And then there are those that love you, Lord, but have to admit today, I'm not connected to a place of power and authority where the word of God is taught to me in such a way that an impartation, a transfer, not only of knowledge, but the authority and the power of the word of God starts to make a difference in my life. I'm praying, Lord, that you would save those that need to be saved right now, that you would put a yes in their hearts, that they would say, yes, I'm coming to God right, day, right today. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I'm praying for those that know you but got distracted, that you would remove the distractions, put a yes in their hearts, that they come back to you right now in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for those that need to connect to ministry, newly saved, saved and distracted, or committed to God, but have been searching in the wilderness of buildings for a church home. I thank you, Lord, that you've overcome the difficulties. Unite them with this house today. And I pray for those who are saying to themselves, man, I wish I was closer. God, I thank you for our virtual ministry called Connections Church. Connect them to your house. I thank you in advance for what you're doing right now. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you made that decision to give your life to the Lord for the first time, if you're coming back, it doesn't matter how many times, 
If you've connected with God's house today, write me on the site that you're watching us on. Let us know, and our ministry workers will get to you as soon as possible, tell you what the next steps are as we seek the Lord together. Amen. Let's go to the Word of God. I want you to go to Genesis 24. We'll start our conversation there. Genesis 24. And we're going to go down to verse 40 and continue this conversation with angels. Genesis 24, 40 says, And he said unto me, The Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with you and prosper your way. And you shall take a wife for my son of my kindred and of my father's house. Then shalt thou be clear from this that my oath when you come to my kindred. And if they give not thee one, thou shalt be clear from my oath. And I came this day unto the well and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if now thou do prosper my way, which I go. Behold, I stand by the well of water. Lord, bless us with understanding and insight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Faith, action, and the decree of God's word call angels or put angels to work. Once again, faith, appropriate action, and the decreeing of God's word brings angels into our activity, our purpose, and according to the Bible, make our way, our work, our efforts prosper. We learned a few weeks ago in our conversation, in this conversation with angels, that the angels, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14, are ministering spirits who are sent to work for the saints. So now when the servant of Abraham, who represents faith, says, my master believes by faith that the angels will come and prosper my way, the declaration of that word rallies angels to his assistance. Angels, I declare to you based upon the word of God, Part of their assignment is to prosper your way, to prosper you, to bring prosperity to you. Now we understand that angels are messengers of destiny. We understand that angels come and dominate situations, warrior angels. But we also have to understand that God allows angels or sends angels in apostolic authority to assist you in the successful divine purposed way of your life. So let's talk about this word prosper. To prosper, short definition, is a good reward for your work. Another word for prosper is success, a good reward for your work. So when you think of prosperity or the word prosper, I want you to think of success. Success at work, success at business, success at family, success socially, success in life. So prosperity is not the dirty word that many people in the faith have caused, call, called it. It has nothing to do with uh, an evil intent. It does have everything to do with what God says is available to you and the I will make your way prosper. The Bible says, I want you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers, which means there's a measure of wisdom attached to a measure of prosperity or success, that wisdom and success are partners in an individual's life. So when you think of prosperity, do not get a negative feeling within you because it is a biblical principle that is taught. Now. It can be taught correctly or incorrectly, but the Bible says God desires for you to prosper. Let's go a little deeper. So to prosper in the Bible is a process that leads to the fulfillment 
of the purpose for which a thing or a person is created. Let's say it again. To prosper is a process that leads to the fulfillment, watch this now, of the purpose for which a thing or a person is created. And a part of that prospering is I must decree what God says concerning it, concerning me, by faith. Because everything I decree, according to the word of God in Job chapter 22, I believe, those things I decree shall be established in the earth. Now, the word decree has caused some confusion because it needs to be broken down into its components. In order to decree something, you have to speak it, confess it, and decree it. Without this confession and the speaking, there is no decree. So the speaking part of the decree is based upon your relationship with God, your experience with God. The confession is to say what God has already said in his word concerning you or the situation that you face. And when I'm speaking based upon the strength of my relationship, thank you, Lord, and I'm confessing or saying the same thing God says, I am able to decree with authority. And when I decree with authority, according to the word of God in Job chapter 22, the Bible is clear. If you decree a thing, it will be established in the earth, watch this, and light will be given to your path. In other words, guidance leading goes along with the manifestation of the words you speak. Now, to prosper, let's take a look at what that looks like, and then we'll move on to where I really want to take you today. Go to uh, Psalm chapter 144, Psalm 144, and I want to show you something that I think will intrigue you, but also inform you. Psalm 144, and we want to go down to verse 12. I want to show you something. Verse 12 says that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. Now, what God is doing right now is opening his heart concerning your prosperity and what that looks like. These are the components of a prosperous life. Our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace, that our garners, the place we store things, may be full affording all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets, that our oxen may be strong to labor, that there be no breaking in, no thievery, no going out, no running away, that there be no complaining in our streets. Watch this now. Happy is that people that is in such a case or in that circumstance. Yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. The work of angels is to bring prosperity. One of the assignments of angels is to bring prosperity into the life of a child of God. Happy is that people that have angels working for their success. Let me show you something else. Psalm chapter 1. Psalm 1, go down to verse 3. Psalm 1 verse 3 says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, watch this, and whatsoever you do shall prosper. Whatever you do shall be fulfilled in its process to perform that which was created to perform, that you will have success in what you do. Now watch what happens here. So the Bible says you are to prosper in all things. Now, there's a faith issue here. You've got to believe the word of God and trust God and understand that prosperity requires a process of fulfillment. And God is saying clearly that you, child of God, are to prosper or succeed in all things. Now, what does this require? It requires, according to the text, like a tree planted by the water, stability. It requires, according to the text, consistency. It requires, according to the kingdom of God, the Holy Ghost, the word of God, faith, and the assistance of the angels that bring prosperity. All of that working for you to produce timely results found 
in its season. You understand a season is an opportunity. So the Bible's telling me I need you to succeed in the seasons or opportunities that are presented to you. I need you to be stable, consistent, indwelled by the Holy Ghost, assisted by angels, so they can work for you to produce a timely seasonal result in your life. Now this means, watch this now, your striving days, your, your struggling days, no, this, these toiling days, these stressful days, that there be no signs of stress, no signs of toil. Because whatsoever you shall do shall prosper. It is not because there's not stress that goes along with the process of success. That's not it. It's that you are not showing the signs of it. That your toil, watch this, your stress is minimized because you're not relying on your own strength, but you're relying on the word of God that says you'll, you'll prosper in whatsoever you do. So when I, when I accept that word and understand that it's God doing the work in us, if you are overly stressed, then you are minimizing what God can do in your life. Because the Bible is clear in the New Testament, it is God that does the work in us. He is able to do exceeding and abundantly above. Watch this. When I look at my own life, my own abilities, I am limited in what I can do. But the God that is in you and the God that is in me says deliberately and intentionally to you and I as his believers that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above huh, all that we can ask or think, watch this, according to the working of his power in us. This is incredible. So if I'm overly stressed with my business, overly stressed with my job, there's too much of me perhaps and not enough God being allowed to do what he wants to do in my life. Go to Psalm 35. Let me show you something. Psalm 35. Let me show you this. Go down to verse uh, 27. Watch this now. It says, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified with hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Did you see it for yourself? God finds pleasure in your success. Now it makes sense. So because he finds pleasure in our success, he gives us the word, he gives us faith, and at times he sends angels to help us prosper in the endeavors we are pursuing. So pray, believe the angels of prosperity will prepare the way, the process for you as you make strides like never before towards those goals, those aspirations, those desires of your heart that God has heard and now God has reacted to, but only if we release our faith to move his hand. Now, let's review a few things about angels before I get to this next piece. Number one, angels are revealed in the word of God. So when you open the context of the Bible and you look at the inventory of the invisible in the word of God, as God illustrates, identifies, describes the activity of those principles that are real, those, those entities real, those, those, those uh, beings that are real in the invisible kingdom, as he describes them, we understand that angels that dwell in that invisible realm are revealed to you and I in the word of God. That this realm of angels is an invisible realm until God decides to manifest his presence through angels. We've got to have faith, but not just a faith, but a faith revelation of their reality, of angels work, and of the presence of the angelic. Angels are an extension of God's glory in the earth. Angels are an extension of God's glory in the earth. The Bible illustrates also the presence, the practices, and the power of angels. Some angels prosper your way. Some angels come and dominate a situation in their warfare assignments. Other angels come to prophetically declare to you what God has said about you, mediating the presence of God. 
They minister for you. They prepare your way. They fight many battles for us. The other thing we learned that Jesus is superior to angels. And the greatest manifestation of God is not angels, but Jesus Christ. That at times they come in human form, acting as a mediator, the go-between between God and his presence and us as human beings. Now, go to Judges chapter 6. Let's get started. Judges chapter 6. And I want to start down at about verse 11 for time's sake. Judges 6, verse 11. A conversation with angels. Verse 11 says, And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Oprah that pertained to Joash or next to Joash, the Abizarite, and his son, Gideon, threshed wheat, by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. My goodness. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? If God is with us, why are we going through so much stress and strife? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of? Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. So Gideon is having a moment. He believes based upon the intensity of his circumstances. And he believes because God has not moved when he thought he should, that he has been abandoned. Now, all of us have been there. Let's keep talking because he's having a conversation with angels. But I love how the Lord through angelic presence, through the message, shifts us from human reason to supernatural understanding. Watch how this works. 14, and the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? Watch this now. And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? How am I gonna do this? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Watch how this works. So God has sent the angel with a message. He's been called by God a mighty man. What's his human response? I don't see how this is going to work. And then he starts talking about his background. I'm from the smallest tribe and I am the least in my father's house. This is amazing. Watch this now. And the Lord said unto him, surely I will be with thee. Watch how God is gently shifting him from reason, from intellect to faith. Watch how he does it now. Surely I will be with you, reminding him. Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. <laughs> this is amazing. So he says, he says you'll get the victory. It's going to be to you like you were fighting one individual. He's already told him that the Lord is with you. Verse 12, thou mighty man of valor. He's calling him what God knows he's capable of. This is amazing to me. Watch this. And he said unto him, if now I have found grace in your sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. My mind is confused, God. I need some proof that I can see. That it's you, because I'm not sure. It's such a contradiction to what I've been feeling lately, God, that I'm really not sure that it's you talking to me. All of us have been there. How do I know it's you? Watch what happens. So he gets down and he says, I need you to show me a sign because your words are not enough for me. We need to take a look at this. The Bible says that those that have not seen Christ are blessed more than those that have. That our faith is stronger because we did not have to have the physical sign. So Gideon is having a faith dilemma at this moment. Let's, let's drop down a little bit more. Go down to verse 22. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord 
face to face. Now, why did he come to this conclusion? Watch this conversation and then watch the ministry of this angel to Gideon, watch this, to get his mind where it needs to be to build his faith to a place that it needs to be in order for him to become what God has already called him, which is a mighty man of valor. Now the conversation ensues and Gideon does not sound like he's a mighty man of valor, but God is in the business of calling those things which be not as though they were. He calls you a name before you start to function in that name. He called Abraham, Abram a father of many when Abram did not have a child. He calls those things which are not as though they were. He speaks destiny into your present situation even so much as sometimes he'll change your name, Christian. Your last name has been changed since you've been saved. John Smith, Christian. David Evans, Christian. Crystal Gaines, Christian. You get it. So now I'm, I have to make sure not only does he call me that, but what do I call myself now? Am I calling myself Christian or am I trying to deny the fact that my name has been changed by virtue of the relationship with my father? Oh, oh watch this, because most children take on their father's name. It signifies the relationship. So what am I saying to you? Angels have destiny conversations and destiny interactions with believers. All right, let's go back to the same chapter now. Verse 18 says, depart not hence, I pray thee, He's telling the angel, until I come unto thee and bring forth my present. So he wants to bring the, uh, a, a gift to the angel and set it before you. And he said, I will tarry until you come again. So he says, I gotta go and get this offering. I've received this word from you and I need to bring you a present, a gift. And Gideon went in and made ready a kid and unleavened cakes of an ephah of flour. The flesh he put in a basket and he put the broth in a pot and brought it out unto him under the oak and presented it. Gideon goes home and makes, if you will, re it creates the platform for fellowship. If you will, he's now communing. He desires to commune with this visible manifestation of God's presence and God's glory. Watch how this works. And the angel of God said unto him, take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them upon this rock. Pour out the broth also, and he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff. He had a staff in his hand that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up fire out of the rock consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Now, why would he depart? The move of God ends when the specific need is met. The move of God ends when the specific need is met. The angel coming into Gideon's life was a move of God. He delivers the message from God for Gideon concerning not only his present, but his future. Then Gideon has the appropriate faith reaction. He gathers an offering, something precious, and brings it. But angels can't be worshiped. So what does the angel do? Start a fire and send it up to God. Because the word came from God, it came through the angel. You need to hear me now, watch why this works. So he gives him a message concerning his future. Now go to J Judges chapter 13. Let's take a look at something familiar for just a second. Judges chapter 13, beginning at verse one. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight, again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. And there was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not. In other words, God is saying, I'm aware of your condition. I'm aware of how long it's been. 
And then he says something that totally should have blown her mind. Thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Watch how this works. So the, the, the angel comes with a revelation from God that's going to radically alter a message from God that radically alters her, the way she sees herself and radically alters her expectation for her own life. Watch what happens now. So she gets a revelation, but watch what happens after the revelation. Now, therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, eat not any unclean thing. A level of consecra consecration must be achieved for the rest of this to work. So it's not enough to get a revelation. You have to continue to listen for the instruction because there is no revelation without instruction. You need to hear me now. Watch how this works. He says, for lo, thou shalt conceive. Now look, look in the matter of a few sentences, she's gone from you're barren and we know you're barren and two verses later, you shall conceive. So now the, 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 the husband is now brought into the process in the prophetic and all of a sudden, watch what happens. He's saying, now you're gonna have to maintain a level of consecration. He said, don't eat any unclean thing. In other words, keep yourself holy. Because when I'm telling you, this word will partner with the consecrated vessel. The, <laughs> this is amazing. The word and the Holy Ghost work together. So in the life of a believer, I can have faith and say I have faith and not follow the instruction. God gives me a revelation. It excites me, elevates my faith. But now how do I get that revelation to bear fruit? Well, there's instruction that I must follow. Watch how this works. For thou shalt conceive, verse five, and bear a son, nor razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God. From the womb he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Stay with me right through here. So she gets this instruction. So first is revelation. The conversation begins, then there's a revelation, and then there is instruction. Let's see what happens. Watch what has to happen now for this process to make it. Verse six, and then the woman came and told her husband saying, a man of God came unto me and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God, very terrible or very awe inspiring. But I asked him not where, whence he was, where he came from, neither told me he, me, his name. But he said unto me, watch this, behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son now drink no wine nor, nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. So not only is her son prophesied, not only has God guaranteed if the consecration is right, if she does what the instructions have stated, that she will bear this son and he will be this Nazarite dedicated to God from the womb to the day of his death, from the womb to the day of his death. So imagine the contradiction that happened when Samson got big enough to disobey his parents without any consequences that would matter to him, and then they see him be blinded, they see him in prison, but she has to keep remembering, the father has to keep remembering that God said he shall be a Nazarite to me, vowed to me, dedicated to me. He shall be my servant, from the day of his birth to the day of his death. Watch what happens now. Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O Lord, O, Lord, o my Lord, let the man of God, which thou didst send, come again unto us and teach us what we shall do until the child that shall be born. Nine, and God hearkened to the voice of Manoah. So watch this. <laughs> Voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field, but Noah, her husband, Manoah, her husband, was not with her. Mm. Watch this. And the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me, he's come back, that came unto me the other day. And Manoah rose and went after his wife and came to the man and said, Art thou the man who spoke to my wife, to the woman? And he said, I am. Watch how this works. So, got a revelation followed by instructions. Watch this. Followed by Manoah's wife's testimony. Wow. Now, 
what's necessary from this conversation with this angel is confirmation and answered prayer. So here comes the angel again to confirm what the woman has said. Why does this need confirmation? Because the man cannot believe that at this point in their life, and with the situation being like it is, that they're going to have this son who will be dedicated to God. What's amazing about this, this confirmation comes after the revelation, after the instructions are given, after there has been, if you will, a decree from Manoah's wife, and then here comes the husband saying, I need to hear this also because the two of us need to be gathered together on this. The two of us need to touch and agree on this. This is the answer to our historic prayers. Verse 12, and Manoah said, now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child? How shall we do unto him? The angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, of all that I have said unto the woman, let her be where? Ha, watch this. Don't you get in the way. Manoah, of what I've said to this woman. Don't you hinder her in any way. Don't you try to get her to take a drink. Don't you try to get her to eat some unclean thing. I need you to do your part. Let her be used by God. Now, the problem for this with many men would be that they are uh, observers in this process, partial participators in this process, but ultimately the consecration the word came to his wife, came to who I call Sister Manoah. Watch this now. So then God gives through the angel Manoah's instructions so he can participate in this breakthrough in the proper way. So he won't be a hindrance. He'll be a help. Watch what happens. So he'll be there if it looks like she's getting ready to get distracted or do the wrong thing. Hold up, sister. You can't do that. Remember what God said to us. Watch how this works. So he gives Manoah the, his instructions, 12 to 14. All that I've said on that one. And then he says in four, verse 14, she may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink. She may try, but don't you let her. Or eat anything unclean, all that I command her, let her observe. Keep her back from making a mistake and what she's doing in my will, don't hinder her one bit. This is a message from God through the angel. Angels mediate the presence of God. Watch what happens now. 15. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we shall have made ready a kid for thee. We want, we want, to, we want to feed you. Stay for dinner. Angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, that though thou detain me, I will not eat of your bread. And if you will offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. There it is. Angels don't receive worship. Watch what happens. For when Noah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord, he thought he was talking to a man. He was talking to the divine presence of God. Watch what happens. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, what is your name? Then what thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor. We want to talk about you. And the angel says, why are you asking my name? What you need to understand is I'm sent to work with you. I'm sent to work for you. Because angels work with faith. Angels are put into action, rally around the word of God. And what this angel has spoken is what God's will is for Manoah and his wife. All right, let me show you something. Go to Genesis 22. I'm running out of time. I thought I was going to finish this week, but it doesn't look like well. Genesis 22, I want to take you down to verse 9. Okay, and they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Watch what happens. 
And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, lay not your hand upon the land, neither do anything unto him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. God interrupts the sacrifice. Why? Because Isaac is key, is a key component in the promise. But faith has to believe that God, his will will be done. So he interrupts Abraham's sacrifice because the test must come. Do you love what you're praying for more than you love God? Do you love what I've promised you more than you love me? Go over to chapter 24. Let me show you something very quickly. And for time's sake, we're going to drop down to verse 7. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house, from the land of my kindred, which spake unto me, at the, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from him. Now, let's go down to verse 40. And he said unto me, we're back to this, the Lord God before whom I walk will send his angel with thee. Now this is faith, Abraham, speaking concerning the servant's assignment. The Lord God, watch what, watch what he's saying. Abraham is saying, based upon, uh, is decreeing, based on my relationship with God, I'm gonna tell you what's going to happen. The Lord before whom I walk, I'm in the relationship, I have authority to speak, will send his angel with thee and prosper your way. Wow. So the angel will guide the servant to find the desire of Abraham's heart. So Exodus 23, 20 tells us angels go before us to prosper us in the way, to fight some battles, to take care of the enemy. I want to show you two more things. Go to Psalm 34. Psalm 34. I think this will help this particular point make more sense. So angels go before us to prosper in the way, to fight battles for us that we're not able to win on our own, to, 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 to shield us from situations that would cause our faith to fluctuate. Watch what happens now. Psalm 34, verse 6 and 7. The poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his trouble. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. He hears your cry and sends assistance to us. Oh, give me two more minutes. Go to Psalm 91. Psalm 91, I need you to see these, write these down. So he sends angels to assist us. Psalm 91, 11 says, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear ye up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. It means God delegates angels. He appoints angels. He sets them in order around you. God sets the rules of engagement, which is why when we see the story of Elijah and the servant and how the army of the king has surrounded Elijah, he tells the servant to go out and look again because obviously you're not seeing the full picture. You're seeing the natural, but you're not aware of the supernatural. And what Elijah starts to pray is, open the eyes of my servant that he may see that there's more with us than are against, that are against us. So what is this saying? There's a two-dimensional life that we live. This two-dimensional life does not ignore, deny the reality of the natural. 
but it also opens us up to the reality of a supernatural life. And he says, these angels, Elisha lets him know, I need you to go out and take a look because there's the host of the Lord, the army of God, the angelic host is encamped all around us. Angels of warfare are encamped around the enemy. We are not alone. There's more with us than there are against us. Now, one more, one more text and we're gonna try to get out of this today. It is, it is, it is imperative that when we are understanding angels, that we don't um, deny, doubt, think it's a lie when God is speaking creatively to us. Don't deny or question the creative commandments of God, the creative hands of God when he wants to place them in your life. Do not deny him that opportunity. Now his commands are unique, which is why they seem so strange or so contradictory to present situations. So when we look at Gideon and his situation, we look at Manoah and his wife and the story of Samson, the creative command of God is contradictory. But th think about it. The creative command comes when what is missing needs to be added to your life. So God's commandments, when he's in a creative move, are quite unique. And they require, watch this, an inner commitment. So he talks to Manoah and his wife about what kind of inner commitment they're going to have to have in order for that which has been prophesied over them, for that which God has promised himself that he wants them to receive, for that to happen in their lives, there's got to be this inner commitment. So it can't be, if I'm going to get a message from God through the angelic, it cannot be that some superficial intellectual assent to the word. It's got to produce an inner commitment and therefore produce faith and the appropriate behavior that, if you will, confirms the faith I have in the word God has sent me. When God commands, it happens. When he commands, it puts his angels to work for you. Now I'm out of time, I'm certainly not out of word. I wanna, I wanna thank you for joining me today and we will, uh, we will conclude this next time we get together. I've got maybe eight more things I wanna tell you and that'll wrap up your understanding on this volume of Chestnut Checkers concerning angels. What I want you to do right now is you remember in the story of Manoah and his wife when they received the message from the Lord, which they realized was relevant to them, that their first response was to go home and gather up the best that they had and bring it so it could be sacrificed to God. They brought it to the angel that looked like a man. He set it on fire to send it up to God. That is the process by which God moves. So I want you to go to the icons today, that tithe that you're going to return to God, that offering that you're going to return to God. But some of you right now need to rise above that. Not just release that tithe, bring that tithe and an offering to the Lord, but some of you need the sacrifice because the word has been confirmed in your heart today that God's going to do something supernatural. God is doing something supernatural, that he's instructing you to give you the inner consecration that you're going to need to perform it, that he's, he's declaring you to be something in your present that you have not become yet. You and I need to understand why God and how God is moving in our lives. And one of the things we see in the text very strongly is how they went and gathered all. And then Manoah said, I'm, let's, let's make him another dinner. Let's, let's get him another sacrifice. Let's get this thing together. Then the angel says, you can bring it, but it's got to go up to God. So that shows you the pathway. On earth, it's put in human custody, human stewardship so that it can be offered up to the Lord. If that's you today, I need you as a believer today, go to the icons on the screen, bring your tithes and your offerings to the Lord and that sacrifice that God has placed on your heart. And let me tell you how it works with me and this will help you. I don't hesitate to give God the first fruit or the tithe of everything that comes in. 
because if you hesitate, you'll start to rationalize. But there's no one that I am more grateful to than God. So before I move in my own life, in my, with the finances that God has blessed me with, I move his portion towards him immediately. And then there are other times when I need a, the window of heaven to open in a situation. I'm between pays, but I know the formula in the word of God. When I, wonder, when I want to open a window, I release or give God a tithe as a seed. Some of you need a move of God. You're in between pays. You're saying to yourself, what should I do? You know what your number is. I don't have to say it. You know what your tithe portion is. I don't have to say it. Release that seed. Open that window for the immediacy of the situation that you are facing right now. And remember, when I move in faith, God sends angels to prosper my way. I'm so glad you joined me today. Tell somebody about Chestnut Checkers, please. Invite them to join us. If they're just joining us at this latter part of the series, tell them to go back to the beginning and watch Chestnut Checkers from beginning to end. Write me and let me know how this series is blessing your life. And I'll see you next time. Remember this faith acts like a thing is so, even when it's not so that it might be so. God bless you. And I'll see you real soon.